आज भारत में करीब करीब 60 यूनिकॉर्न्स हैं इनमें से 21 यूनिकॉर्न तो बीते कुछ महीनों में ही बने हैं वेल दैट वॉज प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी अबाउट अयर अ गो हाउ रियालिटीज चेंज विद इन अगल ईयर India startup ecosystem looks very different now. We haven't seen a single unicorn take flight this year. Funding has dried and most startups are struggling to stay afloat, laying off employees in hordes. The great Indian startup party reached its climax during 2020-2021 and lasted till the first half of 2022. In fact, in 2021 We minted a new unicorn every week. Venture capital firms pumped 38.5 billion dollars into Indian startups that year. But the tide started turning in 2022, and this year foreign investment in India's startups has plummeted 72% to 4.58 billion dollars so far, from 16.2 billion dollars during the same period last year. Foreign firms such as Tiger Global, Sequoia, SoftBank, Axel and Y Combinator have nearly shut their taps. Lion's share of funding used to come from them. Foreign VC funds play a crucial role in startup funding in India. Out of the 26.8 billion dollars that Indian startups raised in 2022, 26 billion dollars came from the rounds where foreign VCs participated. Tiger Global which backed successful startups like Flipkart, Ola, Zomato and 37 other unicorns in India did the biggest cut in the investment. Its funding fell by 97%. Sequoia Capital's VC funds in India were reduced by 95%. SoftBank and Axel also did a significant cut in VC funds for India. To make matters worse, investments from Indian VC firms have also diminished from 12.3 billion dollars last May to 1.7 billion dollars this May. But exactly why has foreign funding dropped? By the way, majority of the funding uh, to Indian startups come from US money. And then the interest rates of uh, US uh, uh, yield uh, were very low. and because of that there was a lot of cheap money that was being flooded into the market and then all that cheap money basically went into venture capitalists that eventually uh, funded uh, the indian startups now what has happened is because the interest rates have gone up lot of that money has dried up right and hence even vcs are now uh, finding it very hard to raise funding which will eventually come to the indian startups that is number 1 the second external reason on which we don't have really too much control is uh, inflation as a whole has gone up drastically across the world right and so many changes have happened because of the ukraine war and so on and so forth now because of that the input costs have gone up and the moment input costs go up obviously the costs of services go up and then the startups do not have enough leverage in terms of margins and what about the business model how sustainable is it Yes, India has a billion population, but then the actual market, if you think about it, especially for internet-based startups, is not more than hundred million, right? So if you think about it, all these different startups, starting from Baidu to Zomato to Swiggy and all these guys, are all running after the same hundred million people, and hence competition goes up, and because of that, customer acquisition co- costs go up, and hence, right, you will see that none of these companies have any profitability to talk about. now the second reason is that there has been uh, i'm pretty sure you know uh, people have been following the disastrous ipos of uh, paytm zomato and naika right they came in with a lot of fanfare onto the stock market and then now their uh, their investors have lost thousands and thousands of crores now because of that now there is a reality check in the sense that oh so the valuations that these startups command are actually not true and because of that many people are now saying hey wait a minute these guys are not making any money and hence if we invest in these companies you know we are not going to get too much returns and ultimately venture capitalists and all investors look for returns and because of the reality check many people are now holding back in terms of uh, investing in these companies so what should the startups do to convince vc to open their purse strings and how companies are trying to maneuver this funding winter there are three things that smart companies are doing 
One is they are cutting down their costs, right? And because of that, their burn rate has come down. And hence, the amount of money that they also need on a day-to-day -day basis or a monthly basis has gone down. So what they're now telling VCs is, hey, guys, we become more responsible. And because of that, we don't need that much money, but we need some money, which venture capitalists like. The second thing that they're doing is now many companies are focusing on the term what is called as unit economics. A unit economics is nothing but how much money I'm making per unit of whatever I'm selling. Let's say if it is Swiggy, right? And then the third thing that startups are doing, very interestingly, is now they are getting into alternative sources of funding, right? Many startups don't realize that it's not only venture capitalists that fund, you know, uh, that have funds. There's so many alternative investments. There is debt instruments that you can take from banks, you know, friends, family, and, you know, peer-to-peer -peer lending. There's just so many ways in which you can raise money. And some smart startups have basically gone that route. Uh, at a late stage, uh, startups today need to show a path to profitability uh, and a path to showing that unit economics work for them. Um, I think that is going to be a clincher and still convincing them that India is a large enough market and they are catering to the right set of customers. Gaining confidence of the foreign and domestic VCs is important for Indian startups. Experts suggest that it is the survival of the fittest condition. And the survival of startups here is heavily dependent on how well they can adapt to the changing global scenario. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. He's moving from employee to employer. Business Standard.